Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your boy, Retro Bliss, and you are on Retro Bliss Rewind. And we're going to have a fun uh, show tonight. We're going to be talking about the Intellivision uh, Homebrew Awards. And uh, we've got some great guests tonight. Uh, as always, we have Mike from Mike's Gaming Gala and Brian from BD Retro Mods. But we have back Casey, the Intellivision Gamer. And... Um, I asked him to be on the show, and obviously uh, Mike, uh, these two especially, but Brian also because uh, Intellivision was his first uh, gaming console. He's, he loves the Intellivision as well, but uh, these two in, in the opposite corners, um, they are uh, definitely the Intellivision homebrew uh, experts, and I wanted the, these guys to uh, uh, talk about uh, this topic uh specifically how's it going fellas um I'm good we uh we got a chance to uh look at uh mike's uh <laughs> video at least i did uh regarding <laughs> this this topic and one thing i love about mike is that he doesn't pull any punches <laughs> <laughs> you know um, i do qualify it like i understand a lot of things it doesn't mean i have to like them well you know um being an uh an atari guy mostly because that's what i grew up with uh and uh being a homebrew guy for that system the 2600 specifically mostly although i'm uh, uh branching out uh with the 7800 with that um you know, I've been uh, privy to the uh, 2600 Homebrew Awards, uh, and I've kind of seen what's been going on with the um, the uh, Television Homebrew Awards. And after watching your video, you know, uh, you expressed some concerns with the um, Intellivision Homebrew Awards this year, uh, uh, specifically with some of the categories and the uh, nominees and the games that were in the yeah not necessarily that the games were bad it's just it was a reflection of kind of well i mean if we're going to be political just a reflection of 2023 but i think it may be a reflection more of what the industry is kind of well the industry the homebrew community is kind of becoming for in television um and of course i have some thoughts on that but uh if we get to the that aspect of it great but if we don't you know we could just talk about the awards too Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, before the show, uh, I went through and, and, and made my, my vote. Uh, and I didn't vote exactly the way you did, Mike, but, um, How could I, you? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I voted based on, uh, my, my experience with, uh, you know, um, I'm not an RPG kind of guy, so even though Dragon Quest looks great. If you are, if you are, <laughs> Dragon Quest, okay, listen, if we're just talking about best game of 2023, and I'm not putting my, well, that's not a game for 2023 into it, personal opinion, Dragon Quest was hands down it. Dragon's Quest was phenomenal, but it was also the same game I played back in the 80s. <laughs> Um, but the fact that I was playing it on the Intellivision in 2024 uh, was fantastic. Impressive. Yeah. It was very impressive. Yeah. So um, let me pull up. Let me pull up the the categories. Let's talk about the categories. Um, for first of all, the game of the year. And you know what? I shouldn't have voted because That's, now yeah, I do don't you know have what? game of. Game of the year should be the last one we talk about. You build up to that. Okay, well, watch the game well it doesn't that's matter like, because... That's like the Oscars doing starting off with best picture. Um, I'm wondering... Here, let me log out. Let me log out of it here. It won't come back up. Even it if I log out? No. Even if I... uh, but, uh, Brian, have you voted? I have not. I'm, that's what I'm trying to... Like I said, I should have got this pulled up prior. The link, the link is in my video. Um, do you want to do you want to start off with game of the year? Because I remember several of them. Okay, well, yeah, go ahead. Feel it, free. Well, so game of the year, you had uh, Dragon Quest, you had Super Mario Brothers, you had uh, Pitfall Three, you had Thunder Soldier, you had Xor. Uh, what else did we have? Um, 
I remember that Thunder Soldier was the only new game on that list, the only non-port or hack. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, not okay. Not here we go. There. Full list. So, so here's the full list. So, so we're gonna we're gonna start with the cream of the crop first. Okay, so 2023 game of the year. So, um, uh, best overall game released in in either uh, physical or digital format uh, was Dragon Quest, Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall Three, Return to the Caverns, Caverns of Mars, Thunder Soldier, Yars Revenge. Uh, Zor, I think I'm saying that right, XOR, uh, X-Rally, Stop the Express, and Tron Anthology. There you go. None of those are bad games. But like I said in my stream, in my personal opinion, in the way I personally felt I had to vote, only one of them was a 2023 game. And that was Thunder Soldier. That's what I voted for. Um, but, but go ahead. <laughs> they are not. You're viewing to my. I view it a little bit different. They are the 2023 games that were made for the Intellivision, not 2023 games being new 2023 games. That's how I view it. True, true. Um, and I guess, like for me personally, I put a lot more weight into the originality of something. So making making a copy of something. That's like uh, the example I gave is if. Uh, Nintendo released the original Super Mario Brothers on a Switch cartridge. And it was Super Mario Brothers, and they just ported it over, um, and they didn't add anything and didn't do anything. Is that eligible for Platformer of the Year 2024? No, but I still view it a little bit different. Because all, all of these games are made on the television in that year. That's what they're judging, not it, that it's a new game, just yes, but the except, game. except the except the category is game of the year. Yeah, it's the game that we're talking about. And if all of your gameplay and all of your graphics and all of your audio come from something done almost forty years ago, now is that game of the year material? It doesn't make it a bad game. And like I said, Super Mario Brothers and uh, and Dragon Quest. I especially Dragon Quest. Anybody, like everybody who's got an Intellivision should hop on and do Intel, onto Intellivision Collector now and buy a copy of Dragon Quest. It is free and available. Yep. Just go go there and do it. It is phenomenal, phenomenal port. It's got some great music uh, to it, by the way. But but for anyway. me, well, yeah, and Dragon Quest has an awesome score. Um, but for me, uh, that's not game of the year material because none of the creative aspects of that game are new. Right. That's my right. that's my thought. And 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 again, I don't want to devalue um, the effort and the time and, um, you know, everything that went into that. Uh, I am by no means against ports. I just think a value should like when you've got a category like game of the year and only one of the games in it is an original game. Yeah. That that's not a reflection even on the nominees. I have so much, or I have so much respect for the nominating committee. I mean, these guys they had to play, they had to play Mr. Turtle. All right, <laughs> they had to, <laughs> like they had they had to select this all down and 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 present what they viewed. And honestly, the homebrew community didn't give them much to pick from for game for categories like best original game or game of the year. Um, if if we're going by what I feel makes those uh, categories pop, I, I do get what Casey's saying though. Because again, when I, when you go through all the different categories, I think maybe then again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I mean, it's just maybe the issue is just having a category called Game of the Year. Because the thing is, is when you look through, you already have a category for best port or conversion. You already have a category for best original game. Best original know? game. So, so at the end of the day, maybe the issue is just having a quote unquote final game of the year. You know what I mean? I I, I don't know, but um, again, not saying it's right or wrong, but I I, I do see both points. Um, you know, I, I what, see what both points as well. But the way I view it is, 
all the games that were made, which one looks which one looks great, which one's fun to play, package great, everything rolled into one. Which one is the best game? Not the best new game because that we have best original game, uh, and I don't think that's meant to be the big category. I mean, it kind of is, but um, I just view it that way. What is the best game that came out that year? And overall, not just new game. And that's how I voted. That's how I mean. I have them all, but but I, I like. That, but 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 you just said it. What's the best game to come out that year? Not just new games. Well, then it didn't come out that year. <laughs> it was made on television during that year. So best original game. That is something that I hold, yeah. you know, a high uh, a level for because that's all just the new games, you know, original stuff. And I really like that category. And I think. Um, the last year or two, we got a lot of really good games because there were a lot of games that were delayed. Not a lot of people might not know yeah, that. That is true. We had a lot of games delayed, and they all kind of went plow all at once. Yeah, now that was kinda... last year. I know. Yeah. I know. For my, mind you, just before COVID, you know, Electronite just absolutely knocked it out of the park with the uh, the Kai Magazine games. You know, they had Ninja Odyssey, TNT Cowboy, Anthropomorphic Force, Star Mercenary. And those all came out just before that too. So there's another year where you got four uh, unbelievable uh, contenders for best original slash best uh, game of the year. But I think I may, maybe part of my issue is that game of the year tends to like there. There was a thread on Atari Age where they were talking about all the different games of the year from way back when they started doing this. I know it's been. Uh, different the last few years it's been a little more professionally done but um and and the like that seems to be the only category that's the prestigious category everybody who wants to win award wants to win game of the year and so maybe that's my problem with it maybe best original game maybe that category just doesn't need to exist we got best port well that's what i'm saying slash hack and we've got best original Well, you know, I I don't know how I can't remember the, exactly the the categories that Atari the Atari twenty six hundred Homebrew Awards has. Um, when, they have when, they have for all of their cat almost all of their categories at least they have a best port version and they have or port or hack and they have a best original. And that's so it. for instance, none of none of Champ Games. He makes the best homebrews for the Atari 2600, but none of them qualify for all the original categories. Like exactly. it's all prefaced, uh, it's all prefaced by best port of audio graphics, whatever. Right, right. Now, in fairness, the Atari 2600 homebrew community and the amount of games that come out is far, far, like vastly uh, larger than. Uh, the Intellivision. I don't think the Intellivision homebrew community, especially this year, maybe maybe the previous one, but I don't think you could have an original and a port of every category, like music, graphics, and all that, and have variety. Because there was only, like, this... this uh, so, games eligible for this year, there was 33 of them. Uh, the previous Intellivision homebrew awards, there were 26 games eligible. Well, here, okay, here's here's where I have a problem, and you mentioned this in your in your uh, original live video when you were making your votes. You know, when someone when someone is porting a game because one of the categories is actually a port uh, mm -hmm. or conversion. Well, some of the music was ported over to some of the Intellivision games, right? So. The tunes yeah, or whatever. Actually, my uh, my Intellivania game review, or my game footage uh, video, was copyright claimed because it was so close to the original NES music, which is a testament to the programming involved to get that well, to sound like that. Well, which is fine, but, but it is still an exact copy of that music, note for note. So, so how fair is that to the other to people? To a guy who, like Aiden Toledo, who makes new music for Intellivision games. Great music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And his music is so good, he sells CDs of them. Yeah, actually, uh, Casey, I'm sure, has some of them. So... Yeah, there yeah. you go. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has everything. And he's got, he, he makes absolutely wonderful music. So, uh, but how is he going to compete against like, uh, what's his, uh, Nobuo Umetsu or something like that? The guy who did all the Final Fantasy music, for instance, or how is he going to compete against the iconic music in Super Mario Brothers? Right. That they had teams of people working on those scores. Well, you know, back well, in the day, no, it was well, kind of just one well, guy with a synthesizer. Well, not necessarily. Back in the NES days, it was a dude with a synthesizer. Well, yeah, well, but yeah, usually over, yeah. they had one dedicated person with a synthesizer on a on a the on a corporate team. That's what I'm saying. You oh, know, okay, yeah, he was getting paid. He was getting Gosh. paid. <laughs> you know, it wasn't one guy doing the programming saying, "Okay, I'm writing the code." For the programming and i'm going to do the music and i'm doing everything else you know what i mean um yep so um so i guess with that like um yeah i mean you know full disclosure i have not played all these games so you know, i feel like it's kind of hard to say you know without fully testing them all myself i don't feel that like my quote-unquote answer here is like the best but i mean you know, obviously, when I look at it, uh, I, I mean, the three, at least from what I saw watching stuff, you know, I was very impressed with, uh, Dra I mean, and again, I'm a big Dragon Quest fan, so I was very impressed to see that they pulled that off on an Intellivision. Yeah. Um, you know, the Super Mario Brothers port, again, that was very well done. And, um, you know, even Thunder Soldier for being kind of a, I don't want to say contra, contra. Plum, but kind of like a contra game. I, contra I thought, gameplay. yeah, a contra gameplay type game again on an Intellivision, I thought was, you know, pretty impressive, you know, because again, just, you didn't really have that type of stuff. I'm going to interrupt you for just a brief moment. Then get right back to you. Mr. Postile as YouTube content creators, if we can't blow out a proportion, a small little community thing, what are we doing? <laughs> I told him it pretty much is something you fun. You shut your mouth, here. man. <laughs> uh, it brings recognition and awareness to the games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? It's it's a feel-good thing. And I do know some people that they will look back and they'll be like, oh, game of the year. I never even thought of picking that up. It's that good? Okay, maybe. And so they might see a little boost in sales. But it is, at the end of the day, it's a small little community thing, and it's fun. And it gives um, us a good reason for a podcast. <laughs> it, it does it does i got great i've got like 150 some odd views of people just watching me vote that's great <laughs> <laughs> so i guess uh just to kind of make sure we hit all the topics here <laughs> before the hour's over is just uh um I, it looks like i have all of it up okay because i was gonna say the next one looks to be the best artwork packaging and extras which looks like was uh best um, physical yeah, so an interesting one. Yeah, that and that because one, of some drama that popped up. Right, right. Because again, it refers to all visual content, quality, and design elements. Oh, sorry, Grab. I thought you were talking about packaging. Oh nope. Well, it is best artwork, packaging, and extras is the category. Okay, so, so that is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but what so makes you, this one interesting? What makes this one interesting is that hands down the best packaging. Um, is a game that it's not a lot of game. people talk about. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. To be honest, in my personal opinion, yeah. Um, I have my issues with Inti Home. I'm not going to get into them. I'm not, I'm not about slamming things down. But I am about being honest. Yeah, you are. Don't stuff. even lie. No, I'm not. I, I honestly am not here to tear anybody down. I am not here to tear anybody down. I am here to call things out as they are. But it is never my goal to actually attack. So I'm not going to go into all my disagreements with Inti Home. Uh, what I am going to say is that their packaging for Ghostbusters Limited Edition was phenomenal. They made a cart cartridge with a 3D printed uh, no ghost symbol on it, had a little blue LED when you plugged it in your system and turned it on, it would light up. Uh, big box, cardboard overla overlays. I don't like cardboard overlays. Uh, cardstock. Um, but 
their packaging was unrivaled. So that's the black version. That was the first limited edition. And then they sold them all. And they're like, oh, we'll make another limited edition. They made it white. And that's the no ghost cartridge. Like that's that's pretty. Oh, th- that's there's, pretty there's no question awesome. out of the category. Because like I said, it was Ghostbusters Deluxe, Dragon Quest, yep. Lock and Chase 8K, Tron Anthology, and Amigo uh a meter cornhole. cornhole. Yep. That, uh, yeah. I mean, there's no question from what I've seen that the Ghostbusters Deluxe is definitely the, I mean, when you make a 3D printed cart like that, that light, because I believe that lights yeah. up, right? That I mean, it was, it's, it it's, was, yeah. That it's aspect cool. of it was done really, really well. Now, the drama that comes after it is that uh, the guy that runs in T Home, Dino, is was banned from atari age prior to me even joining atari age there was some was that big thumbs up for uh for dino being banned from atari age (laughs) you did it like right at the perfect time just to be clear ah there you go (laughs) i know i'm i'm teasing you Um, but um so and so i wasn't i wasn't even privy to viewing that i i know the story behind it um whether or not it was deserved uh, i have no comment on that like i said i wasn't there yeah and again i don't and i don't even know that i know the full story behind it but you know just i know it was seen i do know it involves because because iris and code and yeah um because i I just know with uh because that new ghostbusters that that just got the yeah. goals hit or whatever that I know they were just comparing it to that version and, and what's now there and, and just, you know, ultimately saying that yeah. latest one's a better port. So, yeah, but regard, regardless, the drama comes from, so he's not a member. So he had one of his friends post says, this is on behalf of, you know, um, we don't want to be nominated because we think it's unfair that the awards are hosted in Atari age where the heck are you going to host them? You know, we're not going to host them on some little website. We're going to host them where people are going to see them. We don't like the fact that the nominations are curated. Well, okay. Are you going to watch the Oscars and have, you know, 50 million movies to choose from? No, you're going to get, it's going to be curated to, and the people that are on the nomination committee, I know a bunch of them. um, They're well-respected members. They're members that have access to, all the games and they do their due diligence. I know they do. I know Casey, for instance, uh, he uh, he's on the nomination committee. He got in last minute, he tells us, um, but he went and made sure he played every single game that was on that list. Even Mr. Turtle. I was and up late it's... that night. <laughs> and, and somehow it still got nominated for best original game. So, um, you know, they they put time and effort and obviously the fact that a person who has a lot of butt heads with people in the community, especially the community over in Atari age, um, the fact that he got nominated and rightfully so for that category shows that there's no bias here. It's like the nomination process is legit. 100 percent legit. Mm-hmm. I'm not so concerned about the nomination process. I'm concerned about the category and the content. You know. But that's also, that's a reflection of what came out last year. I I don't put that on the nomination committee. I put that on the programmers and publishers and and all that. Um, And then just because it's a broader thing. Uh, Programmers and publishers are going to make what they think's going to sell. And when you have a community that uh, where it used to be, you know, pretty much every game you put out is going to sell a hundred copies. Now that's not necessarily the case. So what are programmers and publishers going to do as a justifiable reaction to that? They're going to think, okay, well, where can I cut some budget so that I'll still make a profit if I only sell 50 and ports are cheaper and easier um they have recognition already they have recognition they're safer uh so i understand a lot of these things and and this is a much broader conversation uh i certainly don't think 
that uh, you know the homebrew awards um, are anything other than a reflection of what's out there. Mm-hmm. And so, at the end of the day, you know, of those thirty-three games that were released that year, uh, last year, um, I think, in fact, I think, and I could be wrong. Casey probably correct me, but uh, of the thirty-three that were eligible. Um, and actually came out last year. So we're not including Norseman 2. Um, those five that are in the original category, those were the only five original ones, weren't they? Six. There were six? There were six. Which one didn't make it? Uh, Triple Challenge 2. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's it. That those are three mini games. Yeah. 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 But fair enough. Fair enough. So that, that you know, I, I think I can speak without being in trouble that. We're given the categories, the list of the games that came out, and we all vote. And all the votes are given points, and they're tallied up, and they're only taking so many from each category, five from all of them except for Game of the Year. And I'm telling you that we mostly all vote the same. It's done very fairly. Um, It's it's several people voting, and then all of those make it, and then everyone votes on those. It's just a way to bring bring it down. It's... It's not like someone deciding all oh, that game doesn't get in. This one does. It's it's all done fairly and uh, anonymous. We don't know until everyone votes. Yeah. So was Zor an original? I can't remember. No, Zor right. support. Okay. All right. So it looks like then the the next category was best hack, which then you had Tron anthology. Lock and Chase, uh, Revenge of Lupin, uh, Striker, Super Pro Bowling, Rock'em Sock'em, SP Boxing, and Melody Blaster 2. Yeah, uh, Rock'em Sock'em, Super Pro Bowling, and same thing. Or Rock'em Sock'em, Super Super Pro Pro Boxing. Boxing. Yeah, Yeah, there's an error on that form. (laughs) I got to say something about (laughs) Michael Hayes here, because he did Melody Blaster. He did Melody Blaster 2. Um, and unfortunately, unfortunately for him, so few people have synthesizers. It's really hard for him. Yes, I know you've got a synthesizer. <laughs> I have one on board. I played Do you know it. how to play it? Do you know how to play it? I played it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I played it and showed it. <laughs> yeah. And, I wish uh, I had one. I could at I, least try I had. It. I ordered. I bought one from a guy, and he never sent it. I ended up getting my money back. I was very disappointed. Oh, but, uh, yeah. That, that, puts you, that puts you at a set disadvantage. You see, that's what I was going to say, because Mike Michael is a genius <laughs> to begin with, um, and I think that he he's uh, behind the eight ball here when it comes to that category, and I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think that he's – you know no. what? I don't think no knowing Michael and I haven't known him for long. Um but knowing him, I don't think he cares. It's just oh, he, he gets the gratification from the fact that he made something for that select few people who really only had one game to play with their synthesizer. Yeah. And he, he everyone likes people to play their games and, and you know and he's doing stuff that no one else is doing. He likes that as well. I, I, I think it's phenomenal you, that he did everybody, it. Everybody Everybody that has a synthesizer and knows about that got it. <laughs> and every other I... game in the category is David Harley, and he does great work with uh, improving <clears throat> games as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's I think it's admirable that he even uh, uh, did the project. So uh, hats off to him for doing that. But having said that. Uh, move. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and again, like I said, I don't feel like it's fair because I, I haven't played them all. But I mean, just from what I have seen and stuff, I mean, I think just the with that one, I, I, I like the concept of the Tron anthology, you know, just and you get four games because of the fact that you're yeah. getting. Yes. I mean, that you get the little art cards in it yes. and you get overlays for all of them. And like I said in my live stream, like it might be. Oh, I can't basic B of me, but Tron, uh, Tron Deadly Disc is one of my favorite original in television games, and just and just I love Tron. I'm a big Tron fan. So to put that all together, that was 
pretty easy vote for me. Well, I've never been good at the in television version of Lock and Chase. I don't know what it is about that. I like I like uh, uh, Pac Man style either, man. maze games, but for some reason, I've never been really good at the in television version of Lock and Chase. I don't know what it is. I just cannot. I'm, I'm not either. I didn't have it as a kid. I can play it a little bit, but if you get someone like Big Doomer in here, this guy can play like nobody's business. Yeah, somebody can do it. It's just not me. But I, it, need... I mean, it looks good. But when I, when I yeah. and I've not played the the, the anthology, but uh, anthology, it sounds good. It so sounds good. good, and there's some little improvements in there as well. Yeah, I mean, when after I I hadn't played it, but when I when I saw the gameplay and I heard. I heard it. I, I, that's that's what I ended up voting for. That's what I voted for. So, so fun fact: if you guys don't know, Big Doomer is the world record holder for that game. What? what? He's on our program right yeah, now. Yes, he he's been chatting. Yep. Uh oh. <clears throat> so he probably have a little something to say about Look, what all, we just all, said, huh? All of us, all of us schmucks with channels. He's the one actually beating video games. He's uh... yeah. We just we're just. <laughs> We're just a squirrel in his world. <laughs> they have an awesome, awesome intro idea for uh, <clears throat> Lock and Chase and, and Lock and Chase uh, Revenge of Lupin. But I need somebody to g do better gameplay footage than I can manage yet. <laughs> so, Big Doomer, you could record my gameplay footage for me and I'll make my review. <laughs> Big Doomer says he's still unhappy that Papa Pete gave it a C on the tier list. <laughs> um, oh, the rating. Oh, of, of the original? I guess. I, 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 I don't, I'm don't. i not sure where I'd put it. But yeah, then it looks like for uh, the next category is the uh, best action game, which uh, was Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall 3, Thunder Soldier, Caverns of Mars, and X-Rally. I'll just I'll just quickly respond to Mr. Baseman. The Tron Arcade is arguably my favorite arcade cabinet of all time. With all the like the five mini games or whatever, I and that cool joystick and the sound effects and how it looks and everything, just I love it, love it, love it. So, Big Doomer, I've never met you, man, but it's a pleasure having you on here, man. I, wow, I you got I got. Do you have a video up of this? Because if so. I'll have to look that up because maybe I can learn a thing or two by watching it. Because I, for some <laughs> I, for the life of me, I cannot, I cannot play that game. I just can't Mike, do it. Do you know who he is? You met him. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met okay. him in Portland. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, Mister Basement, Disc of Tron as well. I, I do, I do like Discs of Tron. But I'm talking about like my favorite car arcade cabinet of all time. Probably that original Tron cabinet. I am sorry for that distraction, Brian. What were? What oh was no, you're, you're fine. Favorite? Yeah, yeah. So the best it was for uh, best action games, which it looks like it was Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall Three, Thunder Soldier, Caverns of Mars, and X Rally. And. I don't know. I struggle with this because, and again, and, and I'm not saying that my thought process is right because everyone has a different, probably a different opinion. Like I have a different concept when I think of an action game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, yeah, and if I, I'm not thinking super Mario brothers when I think action. Game. Yeah. So like, I guess if I had to go off of just that, I mean, I feel like, you know, thunder soldiers probably the one yep. in that, but yeah, uh, yeah. But again, maybe someone else has a different, I mean, obviously because of the way the category is set up, but you know, there's a different opinion on what's considered an action game. Cause I mean, again, not set, I don't know. I see super Mario. I just consider that a platformer. Is platformer and action still the same. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it depends. Um, I, I'm kind of more on the line of you, uh, but at the same time I would consider, and like I would consider Thunder Soldier or, or Contra, a shmup i wouldn't right. consider it necessary but does shmup fall into action game like what really is an action game um if action is you have to be quick with your reflexes and all that then i could see how mario brothers could right. be considered in that yeah um, i think i said i think it's just how, how you what it's a you, vague category yeah i think it's just how what do you truly consider the definition of an action game i think it's just yeah. where yeah i guess what's your guys's thoughts on the that category um, I can tell you what I did. I, 
I, I voted for Thunder Soldier because um, the fact that it was original, uh, because it was a, to me, it was like a Contra style yep. shooter. It's you tough, know. too. It's, it's not yeah. easy. I've not played it, though, uh, but I plan on it. <laughs> uh, it looks fun. It's got bosses. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it seemed like I was a game act. tester on that one, oh, and right. I was one of the game testers that didn't finish it. Oh. But, but if you press awful. 9 at the title screen, it does something. Like, there's a, do you recall what it does, Casey? Does it no, give you, like, I, I rapid fire or yet. something? It, it gives I, you something better. So the way I voted was because, I mean, we didn't pick the categories. We just vote. Yes, so yeah. I just took the games that were given to us in each category, mm -hmm. and I voted which one I liked the best overall. That's how I voted. Yeah, and then the that top makes five sense. would get nominated. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, for my personal voting. like. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, and as, as a uh, member of the committee, I presume you're not going to tell us which one you picked. <laughs> I don't I think I can just like you guys do, but there's no bias like uh Yeah. I, I picked well, my favorite your one. Vote just counts as one. What, what okay, what yeah. was your favorite one? Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers, okay. So like Which I said, I didn't I, I didn't Mario game. like pick it apart. I just okay, these are what they gave me. And which one do I like to What's play? What's my the favorite most? game That's in this category? Yep. That's totally fair. And like I even said in my stream, like you know, vote for what you want to see. If you want to see more NES ports on the Intellivision, vote for NES ports. There's nothing. If you if you completely disagree with me and want to vote, you know, always vote for, uh, you know, an Atari port, Atari 2600 port, and that's what you want to see, do that. You know, it's kind of a free market. <laughs> Oh, poor Mr. Baseman. He's been looking for an Intellivision. We got to send day. Mr. Baseman an Intellivision. <laughs> you got one or 15 Casey, of them, don't you, yeah, Casey? You got a few more, Casey, right? We can... <laughs> <laughs> I, I need one. I've got two. <coughs> I've got two. I've got an Intellivision 1 and Intellivision 3 that both output a bad video signal. And one of them has a, a controller. I've got another Intellivision one that I'm trying to repair. So I'm using my Intellivision 2, which means I'm using this ooh, uh, ooh. not so great controller. But actually, no. No, 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 no. More often than not, I use I use this guy right here. Oh, uh, you're using the wrong one, right, Brian? <laughs> hey, it's whatever whatever people like to Hey, play. I like so I I am I especially brought, for I brought it up. I I am a big fan of for console games, actually having one of these. Now, for something like Robotron, you need the, the BD Retro Mods. There you thing. go. That's what I'm there. talking about yeah. right there. Bring, wait, bring that back up. You didn't show that big and show that bad boy. That's what I'm talking about right yeah. there. And but this this is more along the lines of what I grew up with. Y'all, there's a yeah, link and, in the and, description and where you can get that one. That's the one you want. And it's I think the the for that one. Day, it's 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 whatever works for you to play the games. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I tell I, people I, all the time, I don't play all the games with a certain controller. Some games right. I'm playing with this controller. Some 100%. games I'm playing with another controller. I play whatever I think works best for that. I game. find this controller isn't very good for Pac-Man. Your controller, especially if you got a four-way stick, would be fantastic for Pac-Man. Actually, time. actually, I. Lock and chase. <laughs> Maybe I could do good at lock and chase if I had a four direction stick. Yeah, yes, so I agree. Uh, so, Big Doomer, <laughs> I 1000% agree. For like platformers, the long play controller is the way to go, in my personal opinion. There's a new one coming eventually that is a lot better than that one. And it has 16 directions as well. Yeah, I. I I, I talked with them a bit. Uh, a friend and I were going to, who also had a YouTube channel, we're going to, um, we had started actually making a way to make this controller better. And then unfortunately, a week before we were supposed to meet again, uh, he got into a motorcycle accident and died. So oh, that, that, was that went guy. away. Yeah, unfortunately. 
So it looks like then. The so that's a downer. What's the next category? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so the next one was uh, best original game, you know, which was kind of, you know, the point you were making earlier. It was just uh, um, there's five on there. You got Thunder Soldier, Pumpkin Trilogy, Mr. Chess, Amigo Cornhole, and Mr. Turtle. And so, you know, like I said in my stream, one of these games is bad. I think person, I, I would say is objectively bad. There's a lack of quality control. There's very sluggish, sluggish it, controls in the game. But I, I agree with the, another thing you said though, that there is a really good game in that somewhere. That yes. just needs to be oh, finished. Yeah. If that was given another month, especially maybe with a programmer that really knew how to tighten things up, that could have been a fantastic game. I but had high hopes. I, I had high hopes as well. I was, I was let down by that one. Um, but, um, no, Mr. Turtle will not win that category. Mr. Poe, don't even joke. <laughs> yes. Mr. Poe style is a masochist. Um, however, however, um, all of, aside from Mr. Turtle, all of those games in that category are great games. Um, but I think it is a real reflection on what came out last year. The fact that a chess game, a cornhole game, and a trio of mini games are all in that category. Um, again, not to say that they're bad, not even to say that they shouldn't be cartridges. Uh, they're good, but the fact that you know these are your options for best original game, it, it's a weak year for original games. I, I would yeah, say it for just sure. happens to be what came out that year. Next year we could get a lot of good ones. It's just year to year. You I never so. know. I know. I know. I know. There's one uh, I I play tested for Carlos that's uh, coming out this year. Uh, hopefully coming out this year. I believe with Electronite, um, which is great because Electronite makes some of the best stuff for Intellivision, and Electronite didn't release any games last year. Um, they kind of blew their wad in 2022 with a whole bunch. A whole bunch of games and then took a year off but um yeah a game that i i tested and gave some thoughts on with uh for carlos which i think is potential game of the year material especially with when uh, william gives it the electronite treatment i think uh i think it'll be a really really strong contender so there's uh, at least one that i know i have and to put a disclaimer his... here real quick i'm sorry hold that thought there casey uh Brian there is in the line of fire. <laughs> I got a feeling there may be a possibility we he may we may lose him. Um, we there's some major storms here in the um, uh, uh, heartland uh, going on, and uh, we he may lose power. I don't know. So if he drops out, that may be why. So just in Fair case. Enough. All right, go ahead, Casey. Uh. I, I lost my thought now. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> so you weren't uh, even on the train. <laughs> I was. I got derailed. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you, I you, were talk, you, were, you were talking about how last year, you know, it, the nominees are what they are because that's what was available. Yeah, but that was after that. Oh, okay. I, have... oh, I'm I wasn't so sorry, listening. Then. Casey. No, it's all good. You had to that say that. I, I wasn't blaming anyone. It's just now I can't think of uh, what I was saying. Uh, actually, guys, uh, I gotta go. Sirens are going. So okay. Oh, wow. Yep. And All I'm right. Be so safe, brother. Be yep. Safe. See you guys. Stay, stay right. safe, Brian. Yep. Thanks. Yep. All right. Bye bye. Yep. I was afraid of that. Actually, we uh, we had we had some torrential downpours. I live uh, in the same state, but he lives in uh, the Cleveland area, around there, a little south. I live in the Cincinnati area, but uh, we already had our. Um, fun about uh half hour before the show so <laughs> yeah, okay i think we're good so. i have i have everything up so we can still go on talking about each okay, one okay perfect but, i was just about to go and look um to be honest though i didn't pay i was just following along i wasn't paying attention like i was going to be the one reading them <laughs> so, so we, we did the best hack we did uh best action game we did original we were game. we were in the we were just doing best original Okay, best original. Yeah, we did. We went through all of those, 
And I think we were yep. talking. I was talking about one of the games on that one. Oh, I think all so I was going to say was um, Triple Challenge didn't make the voting list. It's three mini games, but there is one game, and I cannot think of the name of the game at the moment. But there's one on there that I really do like to play. It's one where you're well, swinging I know, around. I know you really like to play with this, but it looks like I've got my back turned on Casey and just about to kiss you on the cheek. <laughs> oh, well, that ain't that's not acceptable. <laughs> as long as it I'm surprised me, you didn't ask it. me to leave it that way. <laughs> Uh, was there anything else we wanted to talk about that one or go to the next one? Uh, no, just that, you know, like, like anything, um, <clears throat> it's a reflection of what's out there. So yeah, like each year, anybody, just anybody somebody... complaining and complaining about, Oh, these are the games that got nominated. It's not on the nominee nomination, uh, uh, committee. It's no, what was available. And again, not to say that any of those, except for Mr. Turtle, are bad games. I would really, I honestly would really like to see a game like Mr. Turtle, but really polished done right. and done right. Because I think we need yeah. more games like that. An original game, I, good graphics, it plays well, that style of game. I, I, that's why I had high hopes, and I just had a hard time playing it. And I thought, well, maybe it's me. I just need to play it more. But nope. I had that same kind of feeling. I was like, really? This water level is really tough. I'll play the next one. And I was like, oh, oh Mr. Turtle's the game you don't want to play, Mr. Baseman. <laughs> Not Who's sad, Mr. Right? Baseman? Uh, is he the one on one of the other shows? He He's a, a uh, frequent. He's uh, a regular on the Bliss channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a, and he's an amazing bass player, too. That's why he's called Mr. Baseman. He should be called he, he should be called a businessman. You know why? Because he take care of business. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Um, um I think uh, I think uh, best graphics is the next category. Yep, we have Dragon's Quest, uh, Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall Three, Return to the Cavern, Thunder Soldier, and Stop the Express were the five that made the final set for voting. You know, before we go on, Brian from Brian's Man Cave brings something uh, to the attention. Rags to Riches, Boeing, and Traffic Jam, are those original games? And if so... No. They're, well, okay, so Traffic Jam... Okay, Traffic Jam would be considered an original game based on Mr. Chess uh, being an original game, based on Cornhole being an original game, because it is a video realization of a... Uh, board game, like a solitaire board game. <clears throat> um, Boeing and Rags to Riches are ports. Um, he's bringing those up because uh, he programmed them. <laughs> They're his games. Rags to Riches, I did give a little more time to. In fairness, it's it's not bad. Uh, I still need to figure out a bit a bit more. Uh, Boeing, I'm not sure I picked up Boeing. I may be wrong, but I may, I may or may not have Boeing. But Traffic Jam, I did do a review on, and I actually got Brian to co-star with me in the intro. So Traffic Jam, you know what? So seven, Traffic Jam, I would consider an original game. If we're considering chess an original game, then I would consider Traffic Jam an original. Okay. What's going on, Michael? Just wondering because we were concerned about these original games uh, not being in the. Um, they are all there. Oh, there you go. If uh, you bring up uh, Big Doomer's latest post, that'll show you everything that wasn't uh, nominated at all this year. I had it up, but we'll put it back up. No, no, no. His uh, la his most recent one. That is Miss Big if anyone is wondering. If anyone is wondering, the list of eligible games that didn't get any nominations. Boeing, Rags to Riches, Space Panic, Return of the Jedi, Super Pro Gammon, Traffic Jam, Triple Challenge 2. It's his post after that. Every oh, game that came out during the year It wasn't was showing there. over here. Oh, okay, go. I got it. Every game that came out was in there, and every game <laughs> has points. But they only took yeah, the but game they didn't make the nomination. 
Yes. Yeah. But everything was recognized. Everything had points. Nothing had just zero. And I would say that there's only one game there that sucks. We won't go into it, but everybody knows what it is. Speaking of Michael Hayes, what's up, Michael? Michael Hayes, the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. So best graphics. Best graphics. Dragon Quest, Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall 3, Thunder Soldier, and Stop the Express. I think we just read that. Yeah, so and so what I what I had kind of brought up here, and 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 I know I'm not not everybody agrees with me, but uh, is it fair to put sprites that are ported over against something that came from somebody's mind just now? So like Super Mario Brothers or Dragon Quest, is it fair to pit that against Thunder Soldier, for instance? Now I think my my the same thing. Yeah, and Pitfall and Pitfall Three. So my um, my personal view uh, is that if Thunder Soldier had had better graphics, it had good graphics, but I didn't think they they like they weren't blow you out of the water graphics, especially after like the Oscar Kenneth games and stuff like that. Um, if it had better graphics, I would have voted for it. Uh, but I went with Dragon Quest because that, even though those sprites were made almost 40 years ago, uh, just visually, the fact that they were to put, able to put all of that on the Intellivision and it all looked like you look at it and you're like, yeah, that is Dragon Warrior. Um, just phenomenal. So yep. I had to hand it to them and I had to, that's how I voted. <laughs> and I agree, the PS2 and Television Lives is a very good collection. Uh, for those of you who don't know Games <clears throat> Games Attic, uh, he is in the Retro Bliss Gaming um, Facebook group that I'm in, and he posts a lot of his uh, gaming content. He's a content creator as well. Uh, he does a lot of ga game live gameplay uh, over there, so you should check him out as well just by just for information's sake. So, uh, what's going on? All right. So, best... Did we do best sound and music? Well, do you guys... Did you guys want to talk about graphics? I, I don't have to be the um, only one. Well, you know, I looked at that, and honestly, I can't remember what... what were Who were the nominees again? Say, tell Dragon me again. Quest, Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall 3, Thunder Soldier, and Stop the Express. Um, you're, you're not going to agree with me mike but i uh pick stop the express okay um because it's a good uh, it's a good port i it's not my favorite game but it certainly looks and plays well i i, I didn't not by, because of how it played um because mario was mario and that you know it the, the graphics were ported um mm -hmm. You know, Pitfall, the graphics were ported. Um, you know, I didn't think that they... The Express, it stopped the Express, the graphics were ported. Were they? I it's didn't an know MSX that. game. It was an MSX game. See, yeah. I did not know that, so I voted wrong. Which so, is okay. fair. And you know what? One thing I will say about ports, when they're ports of games that, like, nobody's played, like, yeah. um, like last year, uh, the show must go on. One of my favorite games from last year just really really good it's a port it's a reef a lot different though. port yeah they've done a lot of stuff to it but technically um it's a port um and like just the fact that almost nobody has played the original it might as well be an original game and i would say that stop the express probably falls in that category so the, f the very fact that you had no idea and you're like oh this is lo this looks original to me um, is perfectly perfectly fine and is a perfect justification for a port. It was and it was the only game and, that I had never rec Man I didn't Cave, really recognize. And Brian's Man Cave is absolutely right. Nobody heard of Rags Riches before he ported it. Myself included. I had never heard of it. So one th one thousand percent. I thought it was an original game. <laughs> I never heard of it. So that is the 
perfect, you know, taking taking a game, like I said, that especially people in the West have never played. There are plenty of uh, computer games for uh, European, con uh, like, computers um, that people over here have never even heard of. You port those, you might as well be making a new game. So I get that. Okay. And then the last category is best sound and music. Sound and music. And that's a question in this one, but go ahead. Super Mario Brothers, Dragon Quest, Pitfall 3, Return to the Caverns, Caverns of Mars, and Pumpkin Trilogy. So if I'm voting just in the way that like uh, Big Doomer and, and Casey say is just, just pick your favorite, Dragon Quest, hands down. Hands down. Awesome soundtrack, nostalgic soundtrack, because when it came out, I was like six years old. Um, but uh, but I I had to go with Pumpkin Trilogy because that's a uh, that's new music. That was my personal take on it. Yeah, well, I, I'm wondering. If I know, I know you disagree. I'm wondering if there should be just like a little blurb, you know, saying you know for each category just to kind of put everyone on the same page. Because some people are going to be voting like you. Oh, I want to go for the, the new one and pick that. And other people are going to just, like I did, just pick my favorite one, no matter if it's new or old. Other people are going to do it another way. It, you've got a lot of different voting styles yeah. going on. The, doesn't, doesn't and, the, and all are valid. That's yeah. the problem. All are valid. The but criteria like, was, was original or ported, right? Yeah, kind of bring everyone on the same page that this is what we're doing with this category you know, but then is it, it fair way. to compare? You know, that's it didn't like say and, it was and fair, and especially as especially for like game game of the year, is it fair to compare Oscar Toledo Gutierrez to Shigeru Miyamoto? It may not be. It may know, not be fair. It may <sighs> not be fair. But when I heard the music for Dragon Quest, yeah, phenomenal, I, phenomenal. I, that I, I check. That's what I voted yep. for. Yeah, and I don't blame you one bit. And even even Mr. Cold Ports shouldn't be in whatever. Dragon Quest got my vote for best graphics. And honestly, um, the only reason I voted for Thunder Soldier for Game of the Year was because Original. of that kind of moral, moral conviction. Otherwise, it'd be Dragon Quest. And honestly, if Dragon Quest wins Game of the Year, which I think it might... Uh, I don't have that big of a problem with it because it is, it was arguably my favorite game that was published last year. I think if I played Just RPGs, if I played RPGs, I probably would have voted that as game of the year. But since I'm not, that's the and only reason a, I didn't in go that weeks, route. In two weeks, when I get back from Midwest Gaming Classic, I am going to do that video on Michael Hayes hacking the password. So you can get Dragon Warrior and you can give yourself extra gold if you're in a tight bind or you Just can give yourself an game. item that you can't get to or you can change your name mid game. Uh, he did a whole thing on it and I'm going to I'm going to make a video on that. I'm yeah. like you. Uh, I don't I don't really play the RPGs. I, I enjoy them. But I just don't have the time to dedicate to them. I'm more, I mean, I've got all these games and a lot of them I haven't played. So I can't be spending that long <clears> on one game. I'll play it for a little bit, check it out, and then that's it. I move on. So password hacking is perfect for you. You can, you can just make yourself powerful, go yep, play a couple grinding. dungeons, and be good. I'm the same way. I, I need, and that's why games that I'm not good at. <clears throat> they take much longer to do reviews and they get pushed back because I need the time to get good at them. Yes. I think the only, I've only played one Zelda game. That's the original on NES. And as far as a true RPG, that might be the only one I've played all the way through. Um, there were like racing RPGs on other consoles that I, I did play through that one, but that might be about it. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, we played through and beat Dragon Warrior. We played through and beat Final Fantasy One, the North America Final Fantasy Two and Three, and then Seven. Seven's where I kind of checked out of Final Fantasy. It started to get a little too emo for me. But um, <clears throat> yeah, th those were those were my RPGs of choice. <laughs> I got yelled at for putting Zookeeper at twenty five. Okay, never mind. <laughs> That's 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 a different subject for a different time. Okay. All right. Well, 
I think it was a good show, guys. Um, I what you guys need to do if you guys uh, want to vote for uh, these games. First of all, um, go to uh, Mike for Mike's Gaming Galas um, uh, channel. Uh, the link is in the description there. While you're there, subscribe. But check out uh, his uh, video. It's actually a live video uh, where he uh, goes through the the um, who he voted for and why um, on these on these uh, particular games. Uh, also, Papa Pete has a a, a good it, he he just goes through the list of games. But yeah. what, and, what's and good? I would say, don't watch my video if you want to go in there just completely unbiased. Because I do voice my reasons for how I vote. Uh, if you just want to see the gameplay footage so you can make your decisions, watch Papa Pete's video. And he also goes through gameplay as well as Mike, because Mike plays a lot of these games uh, in different uh, videos as well. But one mm -hmm. thing I do like... Um, there there in in papa pete's video about the homebrew awards is that he shows the box art um for a lot of the games just there if you're just looking for the initial box art but um if you want more detail uh you might want to if you if you know the games if you go into the atari aids link that's in the description to vote which you can go to and vote as well um if you get the list of games go to mike's website and uh, see if those games, if there's there are reviews for those particular games. Mike not only sh talks about the games, but he shows the box art and the, uh, the inside of the box and the overlays and the whole night, the cartridge and the whole, everything, so you can get a, um, a more detailed look um, so you can see for yourself. And also, Casey, the Intellivision Gamer, uh, the link for his channel is in the description. Check his channel out and subscribe there as well. And oh, yes. last week, I did the same thing on last week's show. Just not like telling you what I voted on, but I played every single game, including Melody Blaster 2, which I don't think anyone else has on YouTube. I played them all. No. Not lengthy, but just showed everyone a little bit about each game. That was what I focused on for last show. Which is great. Okay. So and, anyway. and I will and I will say, if you're going to vote, this is your last week to vote. Voting ends Sunday. uh April 7th, yeah. Sunday. Okay. Let's see. So, um, there are no spoilers for next week's topics. But I will tell you, on the 16th, we're going to have MC Murr. If you guys know who that is, MC Murr is going to be on the show. He's going to be talk to talking to us about um, uh, video game hunting and uh, building your collection and we've all got stories. And we've all got stories on how to do that. But uh, <laughs> if you want to build a collection, he's going to help us uh, learn how to do that. And then on the 24th, we're going to have Lewis Hill from uh, Muddy Vision. Um, he's going to be on the channel. Um, he's written some um, Atari 7800 and uh, 2600 homebrews. And I believe he might, I, I don't know, He might. I think he might have done an NES. I'm not 100% sure about that. We're, I'm going to have to research that. Um, but anyway, um, that is coming up, that is coming up. And we're also working on a, um, um, a YouTuber. special reunion episode. Yeah. A special <laughs> reunion episode for YouTuber of the month from last year. If you guys know anything about a uh, YouTuber of the month from last year, uh, between, um, uh, Mike for Mike's gaming gala, uh, Dr. Scott from game closet. Um, Mr. Uh, Poe style, uh, ballistic coffee boy, and uh, uh, who's the Mr. Poe style? And Mr. Poe style, we're not going to have uh, uh, Maniaco Porathari. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to be there. <laughs> we'll, talk, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later, but anyway, listen, guys, I appreciate you guys being here as always, and um, be sure, hopefully, Brian's okay. <laughs> He's, he's hunkered down Irons. in the basement right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know uh, what that's like. We have nothing like that here. Oh, boy. You yeah, know, we, we, we do have basements here in, in Ohio, but... I um, have one, but <laughs> most people do I'm, 
I'm I'm in one right now. Oh, are you? <laughs> Even got you get some behind the scenes stuff. I got my green screen green back there because I was filming uh, YouTuber of the Month last night. Oh, don't that's... think I didn't notice that green screen back there. That's actually, right. I think that's the first time I've seen the green screen actually up back yeah, there. Yeah, usually I got it in the other room. Oh, okay. So cool. Hey, listen, another thing too, guys, uh, for those of you who are regular viewers of the channel, um, uh, my live stream may be spotty this week. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to be able to stream. Got some family things going on. So um, if I'm not on, I'm not, I haven't stopped. <laughs> Uh, the channel, I just, uh, I, might, I may not be able to stream, so. Life gets uh, in the way. Yeah, life gets in the way. So, with that, you guys, appreciate you being here. But we will be here next week, same time, same bat channel, 8 o'clock, uh, <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so, with that, have a great day. We'll see you next time on Retro Bliss Rewind. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>